Welcome to episode 11 of Match Monday. This week I've decided to go with Brent Metcalf versus Darian Caldwell in the 2009 NCAA Finals. This match might be the most controversial ending in an NCAA Finals match ever. So I'm going to start out by giving a little bit of context as to what was going on in 2009 since this video is being recorded 15 years later. Brent Metcalf in 2009 was the guy. He was the Spencer Lee or Yanni of his time period. 2008 was Brent's first year of NCAA wrestling and he was not only a national champion but the Hodge Trophy winner. He was basically portrayed as this unstoppable, unbeatable winning machine for the University of Iowa. Brent has said in recent interviews that that persona was kind of put on him and he never really meant to have that persona. However, once that persona was there and he knew people were fearing him, he didn't shy away from it either. So with all that being said, Brent did take a loss in the 2007-2008 season. His lone loss was to none other than Darian Caldwell. This match did end controversially though. Caldwell hits this beautiful spladle from the neutral position. Metcalf is clearly taken down and put to his back for a five count. However, the referee calls the fall, even though Metcalf's shoulders are clearly up against Caldwell's body. As I said before, Metcalf would go on to win the Hodge and the NCAA tournament that year. Caldwell and Metcalf didn't meet again until the next season in the All-Star Classic. This match doesn't count against your NCAA record, so both guys were technically undefeated going into the NCAA Finals later on at the end of this season. Metcalf got the win in this match by a technical fall. Again, as I said before, Metcalf was super dominant at the time, and he won by large margins often. So after this All-Star Classic match, most people, including myself, had totally written Darian Caldwell off. The basic thought was that Metcalf was going to thump everyone at 149 pounds for the next two years and then move on to the senior level. Darian Caldwell had other plans, though. All right, with that context out of the way, let's get into the actual match here. Caldwell's going to start off this match firing right away. He tries his throw by and he's going to drop in on a low leg here and actually get to the leg. Metcalf's able to defend fairly well. He gets to a standing position, but Caldwell has him dead to rights here and he's going to get the back trip and score the first takedown of the match. So every wrestler is taught you want to go out and get that first takedown. It sets the tone and lets the other guy know that you're in charge. Metcalf is a different animal though. In 2007 against Bubba Jenkins, he got taken down the first two times. He ended up winning that by major. Caldwell's going to stay on the tack. He's going to come out of this under over and rip a headlock and put Metcalf down. And he's going to end up getting the second takedown in the match too to go up four to one over Metcalf. This next part of the match is huge, even though it is sometimes underplayed. Caldwell is going to put a hard ride on Metcalf. Off the whistle, Darian wins right away with a nice chop, and he actually gets Metcalf folded to a hip and gets him flat. Caldwell is riding that ankle hard, and he is trying to get Metcalf flattened out here. He is being super stingy on that ankle. He is not letting it go until the refs hit him or until he gets Metcalf flat. Strategically, a brilliant move here from Caldwell is most people were really not able to ride Metcalf at all. Look at the control Caldwell gets over Metcalf's elbow in this front headlock situation. That allows him to pick that ankle and put Metcalf back down. Caldwell goes right back to that ankle ride where he can build up some riding time and almost more importantly, burn time off the clock for Metcalf to work in the neutral position. And we just saw a great angle of Caldwell riding a cross face. That is exactly how you want to ride that cross face. He's taking Metcalf out of his game. He's getting his position off. Metcalf is finally able to get away, and now he can start to work in the neutral position. Caldwell goes, again, right to his throw by in the neutral position. This is a brilliant strategic and tactical move from Darian Caldwell. Metcalf is a super heavy collar tie guy, and by constantly going to his throw by, he's throwing Metcalf off balance and keeping him more concerned about Caldwell scoring another takedown rather than working to score himself. There's another throw by attempt that is keeping Metcalf off his game. This is sometimes why coaches aren't always huge fans of collar ties because they're so easily thrown by or passed. You can see here how heavy Metcalf gets on his collar tie when he is able to get to it. Caldwell is doing an excellent job of keeping Metcalf off his offense. Metcalf is a prolific shooter. He's got the lefty high crotch that he's famous for, and he hasn't even attempted it one time two minutes into this first period. Watch here as they re-engage again. Caldwell gets to a collar tie, Metcalf matches, and he goes right back to that throw-by, which slows Metcalf down and stops him from getting to his attacks. Another thing Caldwell is doing is when Metcalf collar ties, he is reaching to the inside to get his arm in there to disrupt Metcalf's ability to get to that left side high crotch. 
this is Metcalf's first shot of the match, and it's really more of a half shot to get back into his ties and try to get something going. Now, Caldwell is doing a fair amount of backing up, but he is doing just enough to keep the refs off him and hit him for stalling. You'll notice he backs to the edge, but then he's able to circle in, and usually after he circles in, he'll make an attempt at an attack. He'll take a shot right there. So if he's feeling like he's getting close to getting hit for a stall call, he's moving back in and then making an offensive attack so that the referees have a harder time to call him for it. It's the beginning of the second. Caldwell decides to take bottom. He's up and out relatively quickly. And he hits Metcalf with a Metcalf special. As he gets up, he goes right to a collar tie and into his throw by, which throws Metcalf off even more. And this is something that Metcalf and a lot of Iowa guys are fairly famous for. Caldwell now has a little bit of a cushion. He's up five to two, and he can back away a little bit. And watch as Metcalf attacks, he reattacks and does just enough again to not get hit for stalling. This next exchange is absolutely some Houdini stuff from Caldwell. Metcalf is going to snap Caldwell down and circle behind. And look at this angle. I mean, he is dead to rights. Metcalf scores that 10 out of 10 times. That is easy money for Brent Metcalf right there. Somehow, Caldwell was able to circle and block out of it. And there's that throw by again from Metcalf's collar. Something here happens with Caldwell's headgear, and he has to stop the match to fix it. And Iowa gets a little jacked up because they see that he's starting to wear out a little bit. Naturally, Metcalf is smelling the blood in the water too, so he picks up his pace right away as soon as this restart happens. Caldwell is doing a great job circling and keeping distance from Metcalf. This forces Metcalf to start having to take some chances with this far outside shot. He's down on his knee, he has to recover, and he does a great job doing that and almost gets this takedown here, but Caldwell is able to keep a lock in Metcalf's crotch. Metcalf is unable to secure control, and Caldwell is going to roll him all the way through to the other side. Metcalf is in a little bit better position here because his hips are still above Caldwell's. Caldwell is eventually going to be able to kick off and rotate over and get his hips above Metcalf's. And once that happens, now Darian is in the dominant position here. Now, what Caldwell actually wants to do here is drive his front knee to the map, but for some reason he can't, and he ends up doing a split. The ref ends up giving two here, but I'm not sure what happened. Maybe Metcalf lost that foot up there. Um, but anyway, Darian covers, and he gets the two to go up 7-2 to two with 16 seconds left in the second period. Caldwell also has well over a minute riding time, so Metcalf is in quite a hole here. This escape point here is huge, and both guys know it. Watch how Darian times this jump up on Metcalf. As soon as Metcalf's legs are coming back, he jumps up to recover Metcalf. Great timing there, and he gets him flat with his ankle ride that he's been using the entire match. What a huge ride out for Darian Caldwell. Metcalf is down five and has a lot of riding time against him. He has a ton of work to do and not a lot of time to do it. Caldwell is still riding that ankle super hard and having a lot of success with it. Metcalf is able to get away here to make it seven to three. Caldwell is almost effectively up five. He's got over a minute and 30 seconds of riding time. He can really back up and run for the rest of the match, and he still should get the W for this. They break here, and the ref is saying that Caldwell's fingers got caught in Metcalf's headgear and no penalty because it's incidental. Metcalf is now going to switch it up, club and go single here. Metcalf gets an incredible angle, but his head pops out, and Darian's able to sit, and he's scooting behind trying to work for his own takedown now. And there it is. Caldwell basically has Metcalf in his saddle there, and he's almost looking for near fall with a tilt here. This pretty much puts the match out of reach as Caldwell is effectively up by seven points now, and Metcalf's only real chance is to pin Caldwell. Darian's got him flat again and forcing him to do a lot of work to get up just to his base. If you go back and watch Brent Metcalf in college, these are things you just did not see happen to him at all. Nobody in college controlled Brent Metcalf like Darian Caldwell did in this finals match. Now, here's where some controversy starts to kind of kick in here with this match. Uh, as soon as they get to their feet, Caldwell calls for an injury time. Now, the crowd was all over Caldwell about this one, and even the announcers made some comments about Caldwell taking a break. Caldwell takes a full minute break here, and I really think the moment was just kind of getting to him, and he needed to really process what was happening and how much he was actually ahead. There's 47 seconds left in the match. Metcalf is effectively down by six. He needs a freaking miracle. So Metcalf is going to do his thing and really try to chase down Darian here. 
And Caldwell really does a lot to not engage. He eventually does engage, but he doesn't really have to. He's up six. He's got enough lead. He can take a few stalling calls. He'll be just fine running from it. Metcalf is going to take a shot here, and Caldwell is going to step out and kind of just run away, and the ref still has not hit Caldwell for stalling. So it's become pretty clear Caldwell is just not going to engage enough for Metcalf to get anything going. There's 20 seconds left. He's down six to four. The ref finally hits him for stalling. Darian's going to give up this double. It's nine to six now. He's still down three. Four with riding time, and Darian Caldwell just took it to Brent Metcalf in this match. So here is where the controversy really kicks in for this match. Metcalf is going to cut Caldwell loose. Recently, Metcalf has said that his plan was to try to jump over Caldwell and get another takedown to only lose by three. That is not what happens here. All right, here we go. Optional start. Caldwell just jumps away, runs around, and he's going to begin celebrating the victory. Now Caldwell takes off and Metcalf chases him, and there it is. He pushes him right in his backflip. Caldwell continues to celebrate, but the referees are trying to calm him down. I know they're concerned these guys are going to start fist fighting. They get through the handshake without incident. Caldwell gets his hand raised and continues to celebrate as he should. This is as big as Spencer Lee losing to Matt Ramos this past season. Nobody gave Darian Caldwell a shot, so great on him and getting this championship over one one of the best of all time. All right, let's look at this a few more times. So I never actually noticed this, but the ref actually does try to get in Metcalf's way. He doesn't try super hard, but he does put his hand out there to try and grab Brent to stop him. And he gives chase after, but he's not able to stop the actual push. All right, on this one, just look how high Darian Caldwell gets on this backflip. Metcalf is going to push him right at head level. Darian's head's got to be another two, two and a half feet up in the air. He could have got really hurt on national television. Thank God he didn't. Metcalf and Iowa did have to put out an apology statement after the match. And Caldwell voiced that he was upset that Metcalf had ruined his celebration. If you go back and look at the match itself, it is an absolute masterpiece by Darian Caldwell. Darian Caldwell outgame planned and outperformed Brent Metcalf wire to wire in this match. So I always think it's a shame that this match is more well-known for the push rather than for the strategy and tactics that Darian Caldwell used to slay a giant. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell for notifications. If you have suggestions for other matches you'd like to see, please leave them in the comments. And I'll see you on the next one.